learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my self. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. And start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work hard on yourself and develop the skills. Work hard on yourself and develop the graces. All of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing, not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy, work on your attitude, work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue, chase, run after. Success is something you've developed, something you become, you attract. So the whole key to unlock all the treasures, whether it's economic treasures or spiritual treasures, financial, social, personal, every way you can possibly think of, is by your own personal development. And then he added one more, which is so important, and it's probably worth the price of the seminar. Here it is. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here. The major question to ask on the job is what am I becoming here? Not what am I getting, what am I becoming? So it's very important what you become because what you become attracts. If you become cynical, you attract cynicism. What you become attracts. So this whole subject of personal development was so vitally important to me. It changed my life. I was a millionaire by age 31. And that was just the economic part of it. it took me six years from age 25 to age 31. It was unbelievable. You know, we put some of the valuable things on the high shelf. So you can't get to them until you qualify. If you want the things on the higher shelf, you got to stand on the books you read. Every book you read, you get to stand a little higher so you can get the things on the higher shelf. See, I learned those concepts. It was so incredible. And here was the most important one. Success is something you attract by the person you become. See, that phrase changed my life. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue. It's like chasing a butterfly, you can't quite catch it. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. See, those were new concepts to me. I'm just working hard trying to make a living. Profits are better than wages. Nobody taught me that in high school. Nobody taught me that. I went to one year of college. Nobody taught me. Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. And how could you work on both a living and a fortune? He said, well, you could start part-time working on your fortune while you're working full-time on your living. I thought, wow. Now he said, it's fun to get up in the morning. Not just getting up, go to work to pay the rent, but to get up to go to work to make a fortune. First to make a living for my family, second to make a fortune. And he taught me how to make both a living and a fortune. Guess what I did? I learned how to make both a living and a fortune. And I found out anybody could do it once they get the information. And at age 25, I started receiving this extraordinary information.
Here's what he said. Your income is directly related to your philosophy, not to the economy. I thought no one ever told me that. I kept hoping the economy would change. He said, no, your philosophy has to change. I assured him that I had my fingers crossed. He said, that won't help. Then what could I do to change my income and multiply it by two, by three, by five, by 10, and then multiply it by 10 again? What could I do? And he started giving me the disciplines and the process of learning the skills to change my life. Now, if you're excited and you're ready to change, let me give you three steps to start life change that can change your life, your personality, your lifestyle, everything can change. Here's the steps. Number one, find out how things work. The first key to doing better is find out. To change your life, really, you need ideas. There isn't anything an idea can't change. And Schof taught me the major problem is lack of an idea, not a problem. At first, I didn't have any money. I said to Mr. Schof, I don't have any money. He said, that's not a problem. Now, see, up until then, I always thought it was, <laughs> right? I was confused. He said, no, no, the problem is lack of an idea on how to create money and wealth. It isn't lack of money, it's lack of ideas. So if you get the ideas, see, you can change anything. Now, to get ideas, you need a constant study of finding out. And when you find out something that works, put the information in your journal. Don't use your head for a filing cabinet. Put it in your journal so that you can do the next best thing. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Go over it. And if you repeat it, go over it, sure enough, someday, some mysterious day, the idea takes root, starts to grow, and shows up in your bank account, and your dress, and your personality, and your lifestyle. But capture the ideas in your journal. Find out how things work. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Don't leave it to chance. Make it a study. Some people just go through the day with their fingers crossed. See, that won't do it. You've got to study the things that can change your economic, social, spiritual, personal life. Here's the second way to find out how to change your life. And that's to listen. Get around successful people and listen. Now, you can also learn from unsuccessful people. Take notes on both, negative and positive. On the negative, the notes are called, what not to do. And you got to learn what not to do as well as what to do. So learn from the negative as well as the positive. Learn from the negative. But now you can also learn from the positive. Get around successful people, listen to what they say, listen to how they say it. It's important. We've all got about 16 waking hours. Practice listening those 16 hours. And I say practice listening because listening isn't easy. I found out it's easier to talk than it is to listen. But if you will practice listening, the 16 hours you're awake, sure enough, from surprising sources comes great ideas. And remember what you read and what you hear, put the good stuff in your journal. Now, here's the third way to find out how to change your life, and that's to observe. You can pick up a lot of ideas just by watching. Get around successful people and watch. Here's why. Success leaves clues. Watch how the man shakes hands. Watch how the lady responds. People who do well do certain things over and over and over and over. And if you're clever, you can pick them up. Now remember, there's two ways to see. One is called sight, see with your eyes. The other one is called insight, see with your mind. See with your eyes, you'll see things. See with your mind, you'll see answers. Put your eyes and your mind to work. And the best advice on developing sight and insight is pay attention.